I'm going to use some notes to um, start our conversation and then put them away so that we can we we'll actually feel like we're having a conversation. Um, first, I want to thank the AWA members and Amanda Zimmerman for inviting us to have this conversation. We want to acknowledge that the land on which we are having this conversation today is part of the ancient homeland of the Kumeyaay people. We pay respect to all Kumeyaay peoples, past, present, and future, and their continuing presence in San Diego County. When Amanda asked us to um, uh, do this uh, presentation conversation, she emailed us and she wrote, I think it would be a huge value for our audience to hear your conversation regarding art as collaborative process and becoming engaged in the community you live in. And so um, I'm, I'm thrilled today to be talking to my friend Lynn Sushols, who I'd like to introduce <laughs> now. Um, so Lynn was born in Houston, and she uh, came to San Diego as, as an arts educator, and she uh, worked as an artist in residence um, in, in the school system uh, for, for a number of years. Um, Later, she founded uh, a local nonprofit arts organization uh, with the wonderful name of Art Produce. And, and just last year, during the pandemic year, we celebrated um, 20 years. Um, actually, Art Produce celebrated 20 years of being uh, in existence. It's a storefront gallery, um, and it has a it has a nice space for Lynn Studio, but it also has a number of other spaces which can be used for workshops, events, residencies. Um, gallery. Gallery, yeah. Uh, there is a restaurant in the front, but there's also this beautiful garden in the back. In, in fact, it's a community garden. Uh, we grow a lot of um, vegetables, fruit, flowers. It's a space to have outdoor performances. Um, and, and I keep saying we, uh, I'm, I'm a board member at Art Produce, but I, I sort of belong to Art Produce even before I became a board member. Uh, Lynn is actually an artist uh, herself in her own right beyond this social practice of starting Art Produce and, and sustaining it through the years. Uh, Lynn is a sculptor, a jewelry designer and maker. She is kind of interested in interactive, uh, designing interactive art installations as, as collaborations with other artists and even on her own. Uh, she's a maker of objects that are rooted in memory and um, place. Uh, and, and to end Lynn's introduction, I would say she's a citizen artist. She is really uh, she has a firm belief in art and education kind of being, being kind of vehicles for, for development of, of a mind and uh, I, you know, in the years I have known Lynn, that even, even without her talking too much about it, it shows in everything she does. Um, so, so I've introduced Lynn at this point and I think she's going to introduce me now. <laughs> I will. You went home for a while, Bhavna. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Bhavna Mehta, and um, Bhavna was born in India, in South, Southern India. Um, Middle India. Middle India, mm -hmm. in um, Ahmadnagar. I'm glad I <laughs> you did worked it. on that. Um, and, uh, Bhavna came to the States, came to California uh, at a pretty young age of 22 to continue her um, studies in, in computer science right. and uh, software development, which is where she worked um, for 12 years after getting her uh, master's degree in computer science. Um, 12 years uh, working for Nokia in software design and uh, engineering and um, brings that with her, all of that experience and all of the uh, kind of um, curiosity and questioning and problem solving um, 
to her practice as an artist, which she decided before she turned 41 <laughs> to change careers and become a professional artist and pursue, um, pursue the world of storytelling and, um, and ideas in, in visual forms, mm -hmm. in particular paper, uh, cut paper. She's known for her exquisite and stunning uh, detailed uh, work in cut paper. And this is something she does by hand, uh, all by hand. Uh, as well um, as the cut paper, she brings the traditional forms from India of sewing, embroidery. You can see she's wearing some of that. <laughs> um, and what I love about Bhavna's artwork and practice is that she explores every material that she sees um, and works with and, and deciphers and determines what's the best way to utilize that material to tell the story that she wants to tell. Um, and she has this incredible capacity to blend traditional form with contemporary art. And um, that's, that's, to me, a magical thing, transformative thing. So when we first met, um, I think we were included in a show together. Mm -hmm. um, and started talking about her work and seeing her work. Um, I think we found that we were both interested in very similar kinds of things. Yeah. And um, and Bhavna has done a lot of teaching um, and workshops. Mm -hmm. um, and her approach to it, to me, always felt very much like um, a community uh, community based education. And I um, hope to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. But uh, so Bob has been showing work um, around the county and uh, outside of the county for years now. She was commissioned um, a big public art project in Los Angeles in a performing arts venue, um, soon to be revealed. It's spectacular. And uh, is now including writing in her um, in her storytelling and her you know recordings of life and and uh, and ideas in the world. So I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. I forgot to say a lot lot of things about Lynn listening to her. Uh, <laughs> so I will try to touch upon that as we talk. And 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 I think. As we talk more, um, I think it'll be clearer how even though we ha we may have different aesthetics, uh, we are we seem to be aligned in a lot of our uh, thinking about what can art do in in beyond the studio. You know, uh, we are recording this in my studio, but we are really interested in in kind of entering public spaces. And, and really uh, having a dialogue uh, using art as a vehicle. So what I thought we would do today is to talk about two different projects, um, each conceived by one of us, and we will uh, show you uh, a short video about each project, and then we will uh, talk about them, talk about the process of the project. Each of these projects are uh, were supported by grants. Um, and so we wanted to talk about how the process of the grant writing and eventually getting the grant and how that uh, process was then uh, continued by engagement with community. Um, and uh, I imagine we will touch upon a lot of the, uh, uh, the main ideas of community engagement. Um, that we would like to address in this talk. And that's kind of the core of this talk. Um, so the first project we want to talk about is called Mapping Home. Uh, and uh, let's watch the video and then we will have a little chat. Mapping Home was a 
collaboration between the current organization of San Diego and UCSD's education department. The idea was to get communities together to learn from each other, to connect and talk about ideas, notions of home, create an intergenerational exchange and, and cultural preservation in the refugee communities that we were working with. The relationships between the participants and the UCSD students was really kind of the point of the project, was to make connections and to learn about other cultures and to, to, to recognize um, the commonalities that we have and to create um, a project together, to understand what it feels like to collaborate and engage in an activity um, with someone you don't really know well. From one of the refugees I've been talking to, her name's Lily. Well, home to her is basically where her family is because she is a refugee from Lao that stayed in the Thai camps for a few months. And all her families basically came to the US, so she can't really consider that Lao is her home. It used to be her home, but her home is now in the U.S. I think pretty much in my life, I, I don't really, I didn't have any place to say like sustainable to live or call it home. Since I was born and before I moved move here, so there's no place I can call this my home or this my place to stay forever. It's just only temporary. What we really learned through this is we carry our homes with us. And a home is not just a place or a structure. You know, it's the, it's the idea, it's the notion of, of what, what makes you feel secure and what makes you feel like who you are. And very often that's, that's your family and that's uh, your memories and that's, um, that's your community. So Lynn, do you, uh, could you tell us about kind of the conception of the project, uh, maybe touch upon how the grant, um, uh, you know, how the grant was written and, and then uh, how, how, the how did you choose the community for this project? Sure. Um, yeah. First, I'll talk a little bit more generally, I think, about our produce. Both of these projects that we're showing That's in Mapping right. Home and uh, Once Upon a Body were um, cited at Art Produce, which is in a neighborhood. Um, it's on a commercial, in a, a commercial street in the neighborhood, in the business district, an older neighborhood in San Diego. Um, and part of the uh, concept of the space was always to engage the neighborhood and engaged community mm. um, in a way that was completely accessible so that art was right there as part of the fabric of the neighborhood so people walking by um, would have this experience. The gallery is visible 24-7 um, from the storefront windows and yeah. um, so you saw, you saw that in the video. Um, so folks that uh, you know are just walking to the bus stop or the drugstore to school um, had a sense of what it was, what it is to uh, see, um, to see art as lived, um, and the the process of art as um, something that is should be or is part of every neighborhood. And I've always thought of art produce as this um, laboratory, yeah, 
kind of a, an experiment in um, public art. And I, I think of the projects that we do there. I think of the spaces that we call a third space. Yes. It's not home. It's not work. But it's this third space, which is community. And um, I'm always kind of redefining or defining what that means because mm. that's a very broad term yeah. community yeah um but in the sense of this project and others um i was very interested in uh looking at different cultures and uh and thinking of culture as um um not just tradition and ritual mm. but uh uh uh, a heritage of knowledge and yeah. I was hoping that art produce could become this place of exchange yeah. of cultural exchange and so um, so I, I I would like to think of the space being a place of a reservoir of community-based knowledge yeah and yeah so I love that this notion of sharing ideas and cultures and rituals and food yeah. and art and the living parts of culture. So there was a group of university students that I've been working with yeah. from up on the hill in the ivory tower and a group of refugee families um, from a couple of different refugee communities in mm. San Diego. Mm. Um, and working with those two communities and the educators from both of those uh, institutions and organizations that mm. actually several others that we worked with we you know looked at ways to bring those disparate kinds of backgrounds together and yeah. how do we what happens when you make art together um, and sort of share in the share in an activity together yeah. and an activity that tells a story and in this case um, we talked about home and the concept of home. Yeah. Um, and the university students helped transcribe the the stories, but really um, this was this opportunity I felt for, you know, intergenerational mm. um, and intercultural exchange. And um, it's one of the things that... Yeah, and what I, I think what I really... What drove me was the idea of talking about home with refugees, with refugee communities, with elders, with, with children who were born in refugee camps. And I think that's a painful topic for anybody, I imagine. Uh, so I think that sense of, of tension, mm -hmm. you know, exists in the project, which I find really, I, I'm drawn to it. Yes, folks were so um, open and generous and willing um, to share their memories and their stories. And um, the university students I think were very taken with that. Mm. Um, I think we can see that in the video. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they... they um, and then we're able to talk about their own personal backgrounds and their own personal histories and yeah. and the kind of um, empathy and sensitivity um, for the larger community of San Diego or of the Correct. Of the world that they would that they're beginning to experience as right. young right. <laughs> young professionals, many of them thinking about going into education right. Right, in, right. in all their fields. Mm. Can you, can you, I think the video doesn't cover how the grant was, came about. Can you say a little bit about that? Um, the grant was through the University of California um, Critical Refugee Studies uh, mm. program. Mm. So that grant um, was an application yeah. and uh, it involved having a partnership with one of the UC campuses, um, one of the departments of uh, one of the academic departments on the campus, and um, in, in my case, um, a nonprofit, mm -hmm. um, the current organization of San Diego, but also mm -hmm. our produce as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, the um, grant also allowed for individual artists to apply for 
the grant yeah. and, and partner with the university or with a professor at the I university. See. I see. So there are many options out there in different regions of the country mm -hmm. um, and different educational organizations and institutions mm -hmm. um, that uh, are looking for community-based partners mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. to do outreach in their different departments. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not always in the art department. This was through the education department at, Interesting. at mm -hmm. UCSD mm -hmm. um, and the critical uh, studies, uh, ethnic studies department at UCSD. I see. So you don't always need to yeah. um, confine yourself to, yeah. to I see. working with other artists. Right. Um, <laughs> Right. And, and I, I find it much richer and mm. um, m much more um, much more engaging experience for folks to kind of branch out from mm. the, their typical partner models. The grant also gave you some funding to pay interns to provide transportation for people to come to our produce if they didn't have any, correct? Exactly. Well, that's a big consideration really with any community yeah. um, when you're working in community, whether it's a group of seniors or students or um, you know, a, a particular, um, particular focus group. Uh, transportation is, is certainly an issue if you're not going to their space. Um, to yeah. get them to, to come, yeah. you need to provide food. <laughs> food yeah. is always an incentive, and it's it's certainly culturally something to consider as part of your of your gesture of welcomeness. Yes. And that's yes. that's a, that's a very important thing for me. One of the wonderful things that happened during the project was uh, the UCSD students um, brought foods from their family recipes. Mm -hmm to uh, one of the workshops and shared those foods with the, the right. refugee families. Right. And so it's one of, certainly one of my favorite ways to share, yeah. <laughs> share traditions and cultures. Yeah. 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 So. And also I think, I think we, what we also don't see in the video is after we had the exhibition of the paintings uh, in the gallery, um, we, we did sell some paintings. Mm -hmm. Right, so that was actually, a, I think, the biggest surprise for the participants oh. um, that they receive the, the, the funds yeah. from the sales. Yeah. Um, and many of them, well, all of them reported that they never considered themselves artists, yeah. um, except for Edward. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a wonderful thing for us to be able to to do is yeah. to um, give that back to the community and to support again the interns. Um, I I think it just increases a sense of kind of ownership, um, and and we talked about Eber. Eber, in fact, is a young young uh, student who was part of the project, but then he came back and made a mural at our produce. Uh, which which still exists. Uh, this project is about two years old, uh, so so the relationship continues, right? And the idea that 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 you become part of this organization and you can then have a sense of uh, you know have a sense that you can you don't have to you don't have to shy away from coming back. Uh, and, and well, I mean, I think that's actually what has made our produce what it is, is that correct. it is that people adopt it and it is exactly what it, the people that are there. Yeah. And that's where you fit in so perfectly there because mm. you, you made it your home mm -hmm. and, um, and helped to bring in others that yeah. created a sense of community there. And that, that's ever evolving and ever shifting. It is. Um, and in fact, you'll see Lenita's yeah. neck piece that she made yeah. on another mural at yeah. Art Produce. Yeah. So um, that's one of the wonderful things about having a space, a physical space, um, is that one can then continue to build it and um, have a, 
actually have a physical space for folks to meet. I, I still find that yeah. very important, and particularly after a year of Zooming yeah. each other. Yeah. Let's take a look at the video yeah. of your project. Yeah. And then we can talk about how how it how you conceived it and and how how it grew. I think the big idea in my work is storytelling. Having people tell me their stories and then take that and build something from it. And trying to do it in a visual way. Participants of the project will be sharing their stories told through paper objects that are worn on their bodies. From so far away, the star's aging light comes towards us. From my quiet rooms, confined by illness, I cannot see them, but I know they swing in their majestic arcs above our heads. Witnesses, calendars, symbols, guideposts, their presence lasts for eons. My presence lasts for decades, but I am made of their substance. There are stories about illness, there are stories about losing people in their lives, there are stories about inner vulnerabilities, because life is a big story. I think from this project I would hope that people can think about paper in a visual manner think about how to use paper as, as a way of expression. I'm just looking for connection basically I'm just like looking like you know who, who do who do I connect with and that comes from being an immigrant that comes from uh, wanting to learn another culture uh, as much as possible uh, by understanding its people Tell us a bit about your project um, and how you conceived of it, how your participants came to, to the space. And I um, should also say that you had been funded by a different grant the prior year, yeah. uh, Individual Artist Grant yeah. with the San Diego Foundation, yeah. um, a private foundation. Correct. 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 Uh, I had just finished. Uh, a large project when you approached me about writing a grant together uh, and this time it would be funded by the California Arts Council which is a wonderful public entity uh, part of the state uh, kind of um, structure um, but it uses public money to fund several projects around the state um, and uh, projects of all sizes, you know, um, whether you have a very small, um, you know, kind of uh, small group or small organization, as well as kind of larger museums and galleries, public galleries. So I really wanted to start to extend my studio practice into the community, and I was looking for partnerships 
uh, in my city and uh, when you approached me I was kind of like I just finished this other project and I was kind of like ready for the next thing. Um, the way the grant works is we I write part of the idea of the project mm -hmm. and how I will involve community and the neighborhood where the organization is based or where the project will be based and then you write part of how the organization will support the artists, but also how the organization has a history of, of, of involving the neighborhood and the community around it. Right. And this particular grant was called Artists and Communities. Correct. So Correct. They, the California Arts Council also sponsors artists in schools, artists in prisons, uh, artists and other um, community mm. organizations and, and uh, local community centers. So yeah, yeah. I'm sure each state has yeah. a similar kind of I program. I imagine it does. Yeah, and once the grant is written, of course you have to wait for, for to find out, <laughs> you know. But I felt like, I think as, as you do, as an artist, as I do this more and more, even if the grant doesn't get funded, the relationship between the organization and the artist kind of develops. Uh, and so, so you reach some place where, where you may be able to do something even, even if the grant is not funded, I think. Uh, that, that seems like a possibility if, if you kind of further this relationship. Uh, this project really started as a very, very simple idea of using um, paper as a medium uh, to do several community workshops that would be free to whoever wanted to come. Uh, we would do very simple exercises with making paper sculpture, using cutting and folding paper mm -hmm. to make sculptural things that then people would wear on their bodies. And uh, this is a small example of, of, a, of a um, piece that I was making as people were working on their pieces. I would, I would design each workshop so I would show a little, just a little sample of, of an idea and then people could either just copy the sample or they could make something that would be more elaborate. Um, and then, as you can see, paper is just doesn't, sometimes want to be flat. Once you fold paper, you know, you can really manu manipulate it. And um, I was really interested in taking things off the wall or off a pedestal uh, and, and putting it on people's bodies. And, and then some, something like this can be worn around a wrist or it could be worn around, you know, your hip. Um, what I really and, like, Bob, and I want to just interject about your workshops and the way you designed them was that yeah. you created a structure in the workshops that each participant, regardless of their skill level or their prior experience, could um, could participate and learn something and make something yeah. and um, felt comfortable enough and engaged enough that you were able to then draw what you needed and what you were working with in terms yeah. of their stories. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a skill that is um, <laughs> needs to be developed. Uh, it doesn't yeah. always come automatically to folks. And yeah. it has certainly for you, but that's that's part of what you bring to the Thanks, to Lynn. the process. Yeah, that's very juicy for me, I think. I think in the process of making something together, then you you can de develop this other kind of trust with this yeah. person that that can then help you conceive of their story in ways that may not be obvious at first. I think I think as the pro as the workshops went on and we were able to have a core number of participants that were really uh, coming back and again mm -hmm. and again uh, I really got a sense of what what story people wanted to wanted to tell to a larger community during sort of like a performance but also what I could make 
for this particular person that would then they would that could kind of embody their their narrative you know uh, and and as we saw in the video the the final event was a real like celebration uh, mm -hmm. of not just the project and kind of the work but people's people's bodies and people's stories and you could see like there were people of all ages uh, there was kind of a diversity in the people that I really kind of was very appreciative of the audience became part of the performance yeah, because they read the stories as 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 you saw the pieces on people's bodies. Our state senator came, uh, Tony Atkins, who is now the president of the Senate uh, of California. She came because she is our um, she was our local senator then. Uh, that was pretty special. So we really got uh, uh, you know we we kind of culminated in this. Um, in this event, but also this um, larger kind of larger story. Right. <laughs> and you found ways to then incorporate um, audience members and like expand the notion of community in the stories. And I think that's what happened is people see that and think think about their lives and think about their experiences. Yeah. And and get excited for that and. Yeah. Um, the gorgeous photographs by Alana yes. were a, a big part of the storytelling and the way to share that. And I, I love that you developed all these entry points mm. for people, mm. um, people that maybe didn't want to get too involved, but yet yeah. wanted, yeah. wanted to be there yeah. in a way. Yeah. I, I love how that happened. I think, I think, you hear of painters and sculptors, you know, standing in front of a painting, and if it's going really well, at some point it feels like mm -hmm. the painting is taking, is has its own voice and has its own mm -hmm. kind of, like, wants to assert some 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 autonomy, <laughs> you know, into into what's going on. And I think a lot of a lot of artists feel that maybe not with every project or every painting every piece, but I think there is this this thing that happens in the studio for many people. And for me, that happens during a project like this where you have, you reach a point where you have a sense of letting go. Mm -hmm. and, and the letting go is also mm -hmm. about like the final outcome, you know, what will happen and, and how is the event of the performance being shaped I, I just kind of let let that happen, I think, in in, uh, in a way that was very organic, very well assisted by Lynn and Nikki and, and Michelle, another artist. Um, but but as as we believe and we trust that that when you put a lot of lot of yourself in the project when you bring yourself into the project in, in the most kind of authentic ways and as artists tend artists I think want to do that mm -hmm. you know I think they they find that space maybe somehow a little uncomfortable at times but they are very drawn to it and 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 I think that's kind of what I want to get across in this talk and I, I think talk a little bit too about um, it can be tricky. It can be um, um, you talk about well. It can be complicated yeah, to yes. to bring in a group of people that don't know each other and don't necessarily know you, um, and you're creating a project together that then is going to be in displayed in public and yeah. presented, and you are presenting yeah. their story, and they have to trust you with that. But you, you know. It's what you do. You make magic. You you transform <laughs> things, and uh -huh. and um, it can be delicate. And if if you 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 know have multiple participants, and yeah. people are coming from all kinds of spaces and places in yeah. their past, and yeah. what they're bringing in, and but it it needs to be your voice as an artist. Yeah, as I well. think I don't think it's so much the. I think it's this liminal space. Mm. It's this liminal space between these 
uh, different kind of voices, you know, this in and and you you are you're trusting yourself to kind of honor honor something that somebody told you. In this case, somebody is actually telling me a story about something. You know, I remember somebody saying that uh, that they had an illness. You know, there were there were people in the project who had illness and were not able to go out of their homes. And so, how do they want to tell the story of really kind of a um, thing that they they don't know how to say that? You know, it's it's hard to say that just in conversation. But art kind of makes it possible, yeah. I think, to 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 address these things. So, so I think this this, this liminal space. I really like want. I'm 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 really kind of interested in that. Um, but I think, in closing, I think I want to ask you, Lynn, like, how do you sustain, how do you make space for artists, and how do you sustain a, a kind of a continuing interest in, uh, you know, in keeping a place like Art Produce going? <laughs> you know, tell, tell us a little bit about... I, um, I, think, it, I think it comes from a place of thinking of artists as community resources oh. and a space like art produce being um, a library, a container for community-based knowledge and um, collective aggregate of experience. And, um, and I keep doing it because it's, that's, it's so rich. Mm. The more, more people that come and the more people that participate and share their stories, you know, and their experiences, the, the deeper and richer a resource we become, yeah. and and I think it's it's that's my citizen artist part of me that is, yeah. feels a responsibility to demonstrate to others that artists can be a resource in a community, just like the plumber and the <laughs> barber and the firefighter, and the firefighter, and the teacher and yeah. the accountant, yeah, um, and and how do we make that What's our role and responsibility? How do we make it relevant? How do we make our work relevant? Because yeah. we, we, you know, I, I think we have a special kind of skill and um, ability mm. to transform our worlds and, uh, you know, and translate and yeah. make magic uh, out of yeah. objects and materials. And, and um, you know, I see art as being a very literally humanizing yeah piece of society it's the definition of and not just something in a museum you know or a gallery or something you you exchange with experience. money you know yeah. it's it's yes it's how you live your life and if we left it up to you know <laughs> media or other interpretations of what the art world is and what the value of art is there's a very different discussion that happens yes than if it happens after you've been involved in a project like the body is at home or the you know in, in any of, home. in the mapping home project and and those kinds of things where people see themselves as a, a part of a larger kind of collective experience and story and so that's that's what keeps me going. That's what yeah. that's what interests me, and that's you know that's I love that. And it's meeting you. It's meeting people <laughs> like you. It's, yeah. it's it's having a space where people can come together. Well, thanks. I think in closing, we want to again point back to this map of components yeah. in your community that you know that is really critical to making these projects successful and also to sustaining the interests of other artists who might see something that you did, like, you know, like getting involved in an organization. And, and this map is really important to navigate, you know, how, how, are, how are we gonna navigate this project but still make it really interesting and intellectually and emotionally satisfying. Yeah.
and inclusive. And inclusive. Not just artists mm -hmm. that, that need to come to the table. Correct. Well, thank you all. Thank you for listening. Uh, we look forward to the live Q&A. Uh, and thank you for watching. Um, thanks, thanks to AWA for having us. Yes. Thank you.